Hi, welcome. Today's lesson is on melting point trends of metals. We've already talked about the melting and the boiling point trends for many organic compounds when we did the lab called Strengths of Attraction, and now we're going to look at what happens for the melting point trends of metals. So first let's talk about the melting process itself. If you have a solid and you want to melt it, you have to take the forces that are holding the atoms or molecules in a set place, like the atoms and molecules are when they're a solid, and these forces are called the IMFAs. You have to loosen those forces so that the atoms now can roll over each other because in a liquid, molecules are free to move around. Now to loosen these forces requires an input of energy. And let's take a look at what that process of movement entails. Now this animation, unfortunately, is not of a metal melting, but the same thing happens to the atoms in a metal. This happens to be an animation of what happens when ice or solid water melts. So as you can see in this animation, we have some water molecules, because you think of these then as metal atoms instead. And when they're a solid, they're all in a set place. So they all have a spot to be in. And they can jiggle or vibrate, but they don't move over each other. So there's the metal atoms, if we think of these as metal atoms instead of water molecules. As I heat this up, I can vibrate the molecules faster and faster until I loosen those forces enough that notice now the molecules are moving around. So now we're in the liquid form. When we started off, it was a solid. You supply energy to the solid and you can melt it. The energy needed is related to the strength of that IMFA. So the stronger the IMFA, the higher the melting point or the more energy is going to need it, be needed to melt the material. So in a metal, we have to figure out what's holding a metal together. What holds the metal together is also another way to say, what is the IMFA of the metal? Well, the IMFA of a metal is due to the nuclei, that's our many nucleuses, holding onto a joint sea of electrons. So hopefully you remember that, that metals are held together by a sea of electrons. And the nuclei, which are positively charged, are holding on to the sea of electrons. And let's look at that also. So I've played this animation before. You can find it at drkstreet.com. And it's an animation that shows you metallic bonding. And so here we have the nuclei, which are positive, and the blue are the sea of electrons that are moving around. And the nuclei hold on to these sea of electrons. So the stronger the attraction for the nucleus, to these blue or electrons, at least visually here, that would be the strength of the IMFA. So if the IMFA is due to the nuclei holding onto the sea of electron, what makes a strong IMFA? Well, to get a strong IMFA, you have to have a high effective nuclear charge and a small radius. And that's something we called in class a high nuclear control. So if you remember nuclear control, it is related to the periodic table. So let's look at the periodic table. Now this periodic table actually lists the melting points in degrees Celsius. So we can look at the trends and relate those to nuclear control. So if you remember as we go down, so here are the metals, remember not hydrogen. Here are the alkali metals. As we go down a column, the atoms get much bigger and the nuclear control decreases. And because it decreases, it's not holding very tightly to those sea of electrons. And so it's easier to move that bond or loosen that bond. So notice as we go down the column, the melting points get lower and lower and lower because the nuclear control gets lower. So I go down this column, it gets lower and lower. What about going across? the periodic table for the metals. Remember, we're not doing the nonmetals right now. As we go across, the nuclear control increases. Why? 
because the nucleus gets an extra proton and we didn't add much shielding as we go across. So the melting points increase as we go this way. Now, if we look carefully at the transition metals, you'll see a lot of up and down. So notice it starts to go up and up and up and then it drops down and then goes up and then it drops and, and goes down again. So we're not gonna concern ourselves with the transition metals. There's a lot more complicated reasons for those. We're just gonna look at the metals, just the alkali metals and the alkaline earth metals. So as you go down, it decreases, and you, as it, you go across, it increases. And that's due to more nuclear control. So let's sum that up. What is the trend for melting points for metals, at least the alkali metals and the alkaline earth metals? As you go down the periodic table, the melting point decreases. Why? Because nuclear control decreases because the atoms are getting larger and larger, and it's easier to break that IMFA. As you go across the periodic table, the melting point increases. Why? Because you have increased nuclear control, more protons, not so much shielding addition. So the nuclear control increases and it's holding on. The IMFA is stronger. And remember, watch out for the transition metals. They go up and down, so we're not really gonna worry about those for right now. So there you have it, trends and melting points. Thanks for listening.